Good morning, class. This is Professor Arne Brewster, and today I'll be talking to you about the New England writer Sarah Kemble Knight. So the reading that you'll be doing on Sarah Kemble Knight is called A Journey from Boston to New York, and it's an influential and important piece because it is the first story by a woman writer detailing the very terrifying and arduous journey of traveling alone as an early woman, you know, early still Puritan era woman um, by herself from Boston to New York, which took numerous weeks on horseback. So we are now entering a new era, the 1700s in American history and literature. There are tremendous changes that have swept the region economically, politically, ideologically, and demographically. The land is much healthier to inhabit. The population is growing fast. The colonists are living longer. Indeed, they are not even called colonists anymore as the land has been settled by white people for over 200 years. If we look back to John Smith, who was here in 1570, that is now over 130 years ago. The land has changed. The motives and reasons for being have changed. At this time in Europe, the Enlightenment movement is sweeping the country in the early 1700s. And the two key contributors in England are Sir Isaac Newton, John Hobbes, and John Locke. I'll say those were the three contributors. These were great intellectuals of the time, and they are moving the population away from religion towards a new emphasis on the individual and man's control of his own destiny. To thine own self be true becomes the dictum of the age. No longer is the world dominated by a fear of God and a need and desire to fulfill God's will for us as it was for Bradford and Winthrop. During this time in New England, the Quaker religion flourished and implemented new theories of equality and tolerance. The Quaker William Penn founded his own colony in what is now Pennsylvania, and he gave new roles to women both in their meetings at the meeting house and at home. There was also a much higher degree of literacy in the colonies. Numerous schools have been established. Following Harvard in 1636 came William and Mary in Virginia in 1693, Princeton University in 1747, Brown University in 1765, Yale in 1701. But education remains a privilege for the wealthy elites, and very few women are formally educated, although they receive training in reading and writing. Slaves which have begun to populate the eastern seaboard receive no education. Now Sarah Kemble Knight unlike the previous writers you've encountered, was born in New England in 1666. She died in 1727, and she wrote a very popular travel narrative about her journey from Boston to New York that is not so much about the land as it is about the people she encountered along the way. This became a literary type of ethnography 
and important for its novelty. Now, this narrative was not published until long after Sarah Kemble's Knight's death in 1825. It was published, but it became immediately popular and is still widely read today. Why did her narrative remain in print and why was it so popular? One, because of the way she cast herself as a woman. Sarah Kemble Knight writes about herself as a sort of larger-than-life character with a very strong, humorous persona, a woman who is both sophisticated and witty, but also terrified and humbled by what she encounters. The document was considered very racy, even when it was published in 1825, more than 50 years after it was written. You see, the document provided people a new way of understanding women and what they were like. More than mere virtuous home keepers and wives and mothers, Knight painted herself as a liberated, independent woman and indeed, she was a very savvy businesswoman who had no children. Knight's tone in her journal is both literary and worldly. She focuses on things like the way people eat and speak, their clothing, their manners, their customs. And she sort of reveals her upper class preoccupations. Many students find her to be rather judgmental in her observations. See what you think. Think if you can find some of the humor in the way she expresses herself. And also note the way she fashions her writing persona. Is she racist or is she classist? How does she react to the poor family that she encounters living in a hut? What does she think of New Yorkers versus Bostonians? And what prejudices does she reveal as someone from a nor more northern part of New England? You yourself might evince some of the same prejudices if you are from Boston when you go and visit New York. Keep a tally and see. One other significant piece of Knight's narrative is the way that she paints a picture of woman in nature. She confronts nature unlike any woman has ever done before in writing without mentioning God. You see, when Mary Rowlandson wrote about her captivity, she peppered her document with references to God pleading for his salvation and protection. Sarah Kemble Knight, crossing the river at night in the dark, terrified of the trees which appear as beasts, does not invoke God. Instead, she looks high to the moon for safety and reassurance. Why is this relationship with nature so important? And how does it relate to your role in nature today. It is very contemporary, and this is one reason why Knight's document has remained so popular through the ages.